Hey, how's it going? And today I'm going to walk you through using the camera and the level sequencer in Unreal Engine. I don't want to tell you how many times I've been through this tutorial already and had to redo it. There's a lot of little gotchas along the way. And so my goal is just to give you a basic introduction to the camera. And from there, you should be able to continue learning. I've been frustrated with the learning the camera system. It, to me, it's uh, it's kind of complicated. And I've worked in other software programs, but it's, it's just the way it is, you know. So to go, we're going to go uh, launch. And we're in 4.26, so I'm in the most current version. As you know, they're developing Unreal at an Unreal pace, actually. And so what you know today may not apply tomorrow. <laughs> and there's some things with the way they name things that doesn't really work for me. So it makes it more confusing sometimes. But anyway, we're going to go into games and we're going to go to next. Then we're just going to, we're going to go to third person. And this is basically just going to be a two shot sequence. And I figure once you know how to do two shots, you can figure out how to do three and four and all, a whole series of them. So anyway, we'll go next and we do want the starter content. And I'm just going to call this Cine 1001 because that feels like how many times I've tried doing this already. And the project will take a minute to load up. One thing you can do to speed up your system if you have a, uh, is to clone your hard drive and then just swap in a an SSD drive. I noticed that really sped up my system. So we're just going to go step by step here and I apologize that this video might be a little bit longer. I just want to make sure that I explain everything as clearly and as simply as possible and that takes a little bit more time. So the first thing I want to do, we want to do is get organized. So we're going to go to the content browser. That little button right there is real important because it shows you the hierarchical structure of your system and you basically got subfolders and folders inside folders and so it's like what is it russian dolls <laughs> you know it's just things inside of things and it's real easy to get confused where you are so where we want to be is on the content directory which is the root directory and so you can see there's five folders inside that folder right and then these folders have folders inside of those folders so it's real confusing so what we want to do is create our a uh, sixth folder just for the movie clips that we're going to be creating so i'm going to right click here and then I'm going to go to new folder and I'm just going to call this clips because that's all that's going to be in there. That's all good. Now we've got, you can see we've got our clips folder. Here's one gotcha, a little bit of a gotcha here. If you double click on this folder, you're inside this folder, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to add what's called the level sequencer. And I don't know why they call it that name. I, to me, they should just call it the... I don't know, basic clip or something, because that's essentially what it is. But we'll come in here and we'll go add level sequence. There it is. Now here's the first gotcha. You would think that because we're already in this folder that when we go to save it, we'd all be in that folder, but we're not. So we got to come up here and make sure we're inside the clips folder again. You can see the what they call the breadcrumb trail here where it goes games, clips. So now we know we're inside the clips folder, but you got to re-click into it again. So it says new level sequence, but we're going to call this main because this is going to be our main clip so just think of a level sequence as a as a, like an episode of filming like a shot it's a container for holding video clips just think of it that way and animation as well so it's kind of confusing at first here's a kind of second confusing thing once we save that level sequence it brings us into the sequencer which is down here on the bottom but if we click on our content browser that we see it here and you see this little representation in the scene so again think of the the level sequence a session an editing session of multiple clips so you can use it as a placeholder for other clips so, and, and then it's a it can be a clip on its own that you can import into another sequence so anyway there that is so now we've got this and we're going to right click on this and we're going to go duplicate and we're going to call this shot one so and hit enter so basically we've got two sequences we got this one and we got this one and each one of these can be a freestanding clip and it can also hold clips inside of it so just think of these as uh, filming episodes you know i guess that's the easiest way to think of them as filming episodes now if we right click on this we can duplicate that and it automatically names it shot shot two so we've got these three episodes that we can use to store video clips and animation and they can all be nested inside of each other so what we're going to do is we're going to take two shots we're going to do a clip here and put a clip in here and then we're going to put a clip in here and then we're going to put these two clips inside of this one which is empty so this will be empty but it'll hold these two shots so just think of them as nesting dolls really nesting filming clips <laughs> they can go inside of each other it's interesting it's just a different way of 
conceptualizing this. So that's why it gets confusing, just because it's not clear. Like to me, it wasn't clear what was what. So anyway, now let's uh, just summarize what we did. We did a folder, and we've got our three filming episodes here that can be nested within each other or just stand by themselves as clips. And so this is our main one that's empty right now. If I click here, that's inside of it. If I come here and click this, I'm inside of that one. And then if I click this one, I'm inside of that one. And as you see, they're just blank. They're just blank timelines, really. Maybe by the end of this, I'll come up with a name that makes sense to me. <laughs> I guess if you really think about it, you just call them video animation timelines because that's, that's really what they are. They're just video... And because if you look at it, it's just a timeline and it's blank. I hope I didn't confuse you more with all that. So these video timelines, we got three and they can all nest inside of each other. And this one is the one we're gonna use to put these two clips inside of. So we got that out of the way. The next thing we wanna do that can be confusing is we're gonna go into shot one. So our first step now that we've got our, our three timelines, we're going to add an animation to that timeline. So if I double click on this, it brings me into that timeline, the shot one timeline. What we're gonna do is, what's confusing and what was a gotcha on this, is if you look at this character right here, it, it's a third person character, but if we went to try to film this, it, you wouldn't see it. <laughs> and I can't tell you how frustrating that was to, for me to figure that out. So I don't wanna say it's an illusion, but it's basically like a placeholder, but there's really nothing there if you were to film this. And trust me, you can try it yourself. Try filming this uh, once you learn how to do it and tell me what you see. You won't see anything. So what we've got to do is we've got to put a mannequin here, an actual skeletal mesh here, and then we're going to animate it on this timeline right here. So this timeline actually serves two purposes. It serves as a place where we hold our animations, and then it also stores a video timeline clip that records those animations underneath it. So you'll see what I mean in a minute. So we're looking at this blank timeline, and if we come in here to track, well, first let's swap this character out. So to do that, we're going to go into the content browser. We're going to go into mannequins. We're going to go to character and we're going to go to the mesh here okay and there's our let's be equal opportunity and we're going to go female <laughs> now if we clicked on this and then we click on the third person character in the scene if we right click you can see we can replace it we can swap it out so let's just do that now and you see we've swapped out our character now right now that is filmable the third person thing that was on there was not because it was just a blueprint it's just an illusion in your mind so with you being clicked on this mannequin if we hit end we can ground her on the floor that almost sounds bad doesn't it? <laughs> and if we go to the I believe it's a z rotation we want we can spin her and face her toward the stairs and of course we can use these to move her about so we kind of put her where we want her there okay so we've swapped that out that's good okay so now we can go back into if we go into our content we can go into our clip folder we can go to our shot one and being clicked on that i like to keep these kind of closed up collapsed then if you double click it won't doesn't pull you in there just click over there okay so now we can add this character to our timeline so what we're going to do is we're going to go to track actor to sequencer and we can add her she's going to be the third person character so essentially right now this is, is an animation but there's no video timeline on here so we we're creating an animation but it's not going to be recorded because we don't have the video we don't have a camera in here yet and it's the camera that will bring in the video timeline so this sequence thing holds animations and a video recording timeline. That's what you need to know about this. So that's confusing because you're looking at this and like, well, what is this exactly? And it's it's just an animation, but it's not going to be recordable until we bring in a camera to put on the timeline. So now what we want to do, now that we've got her in our sequencer, is that we can create an animation here. Now it won't be recordable until we bring in the camera. So if I come to animation, I have a choice of animations and we can just choose. I have one here that's um, idle. Now you see it brought in an animation. Now, if uh, let's see if I hit play up here, you can see that's the that thing there, but it's not really there. There she is over there. Kind of weird how it works, you know, but she's over here. And see how that the guy disappeared? <laughs> it's weird. So what we can do is drag this animation all the way to the end. And this is going to be our the length of our third person animation right there, okay? So we've got her over there. I should explain something on this timeline here. So on the timeline it says negative 15, so that's negative 15 frames. It's giving us some playroom here, room to move. And then this, if you want to expand how many frames you got, you just click and drag this. And you notice, see how the scroll bar is getting? And then you got the green over here and the red, and that this is the actual length of our actual clip. So it goes from 0, 0, 0 
to 150 or 165 frames right because it's technically starting at negative 15 all the way to 150 but our actual clip length and so if we want to change the length of a clip we would just drag this red marker here and we got a green marker here so this is basically the length of our clip at 150 frames and then we have this animation now that plays for 150 frames and it's just this girl mannequin just standing there doing nothing so now what we want to do is we want to add a camera to this scene so that we can record it so if we go to track well, we don't even have to do that. We actually have this button right here and we can just say, see where it says create a new camera. All we have to do is actually just click that and we batted our camera. Now look what happened when we did that. Quite a few things just happened. And this is where, to me, it gets really, really confusing. So like I said, I like to keep these things collapsed. So what it brought in is this camera cuts thing. And again, the, these naming conventions, I, I don't necessarily agree with them, but this is basically our video timeline right here. That's our video editing timeline. This is like our NLE right here. That's our NLE video timeline. That's what we can see is being recorded. It's giving you a thumbnail with the camera scene. And this is our 150. If we recorded this out, this is all we would see right now. The other thing that it did, and I don't know if I like this, is it, there's two ways to film when you're filming. One is it's called Pilot Active, and basically it allows you to film as if you're the camera yourself, like you're, you're seen from the point of view of the camera. And I don't always like that. I like to just... I like to see the camera externally and move it around and then see what the camera's seeing. I don't necessarily like to be the camera myself. It's just a preference and you can film either way and I'll show you that in a minute here. But if we click this, it pulls us out of that mode. And this is the mode that I kind of almost prefer to see in. I like to see the entire scene and then I like to see what the camera is seeing. Unfortunately, you can't, I don't think you can move this box. It's kind of locked in that position. This is our basic scene right here, right? Okay, and if we want to get back in that mode, we just go here to perspective and go to Cine Camera Actor. And so when you ever see pilot active, that means you're filming, if you move the camera using the WASDQE shortcuts that you'll be filming, but it's like you're the camera, but I don't like to film that way. I, I like to see this whole scene and then see what the camera's seeing. That's just me. So that's how we're going to get going on this but it gives you at least a perspective of what the camera is seeing to get our first shot now so now we've got this our video recording timeline right there the camera cuts and beneath it are just the animations of the actors in our scene so everything beneath camera cuts are basically animation so we've got our third person and we've got our camera which is considered an actor and we can move it and record the animation of the camera too so it's just confusing because you've got a lot going on here and it happens automatically so it, when it comes in it automatically puts you in pilot mode which you may not want to be in and then it brings in all this other stuff you're kind of like what's going on what is all this stuff but it's not as complicated as it seems once you get going so let's just get started on shooting our first scene so we got to be clicked on the camera actor right and you can see it over here too and if we slide this we can see it's just called cine camera actor so that we're on the camera right now and we can animate the camera and that's what we're going to do so we'll see we're at frame zero 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 we're on the first frame basically and then what we're going to do there's a couple ways you can move the camera i actually just prefer to use these controls and these actually take a little bit of getting used to it too but y is going to move us left to right and so you can see there we are moving in this little box here and then the x is going to bring us in and out so let's say we just want a simple pedestal upshot. So we're gonna kind of zoom in on her and Z brings us up and down. It's all very counterintuitive to me because this isn't the coordinates that I'm used to. So Y is to right, X is in and out. So we got that. And just be aware of what you're clicked on. So that's our first shot right there, right? That's where the camera's positioned. We're all good. Then all we have to do is you come down here to transform because that's what's controlling those, those nine options over there the location rotation and scale but if we keep it collapsed it'll keyframe all of those at the same time all nine of those options at the same time and you can see it created a keyframe so now all we got to do is just drag the timeline all the way to the end like this and put it at 150. now we can reposition the camera so make sure we're on the camera transform got collapsed over here and i just know that z is going to bring us up so i just come up to there I could even punch in a little bit if I wanted to kind of do a little bit of a different angle. Now over here you see the camera. So you could actually just drag the camera around here freestyle too. So it's just a preference. I don't like the pilot mode that sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. But I, I just prefer to see the whole scene and then see what the camera scene. That's just me. Now all we have to do, because we're animating the camera down here, right? We just create another keyframe. And now we've got two keyframes. Now if I click these controls down here, it'll take us back to the front. And if I'll hit play, you'll see it's recorded our first camera move, just like that. When it gets to the end of this frame, and you can just drag this to get down there to the 150th frame, 
let's say there was some concerns about this being maybe not in focus what you can do is you can also animate the camera controls and one of them is focus so if we click here we can come over here and look on the left side and you see that little eyedropper there we just click that and if we click on her head it should bring her into focus and you notice that it changed down here but we have to hit a keyframe to lock that in and record it okay so this basically completes our first shot and that took us about me about 20 minutes to explain. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I, and so if I hit play, you can see there is our first shot, just like that. Okay, and that's fantastic. And like I said, once you get going with this and start understanding how it works, it'll become more intuitive. But at first, I, I have to be honest with you, is it is a little a bit of a gotcha situation. Now, I'm gonna just show you something really, really quick to jump ahead. If you wanna just record this first shot out and this is all you wanna do, just this one shot and you wanna call it a day, you just see come here where you, and you click on this, you can render it out right now. I wouldn't recommend ever putting it out as AVI. I would always do a PNG sequence and put it in a folder. But watch what happens when we click Capture Movie. We can just save selected and it's already saved out our first clip. Okay, so that's that. I would recommend saving it out as a PNG sequence. I think what I'm gonna do, because this video is already 20 minutes long, I'm gonna cut it right here and then I'm gonna come back and do a part two of doing a second shot and then putting that in another thing. So we'll kind of review a little bit more on the second one. So this is at least get you your first shot and you can know how to render it out and take it from there. So take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.